I want to address a comment that came in on a video. Um, the video was called How to Discover and Define Your Trading Edge. The comment's from a man named uh, James uh, E. Sparks, I think, if I read it right. Great video got me thinking about how I want to quit after three years. And I won't go through the details because you can read it yourself. It's a very heartfelt message. And I appreciate the sharing. I appreciate where you are. I myself had found myself in this place 30-something years ago, and I, I know the level of despair and despondency that you might be in. The best thing to do, in my humble opinion, is, is just what you suggest, which is, you know, sit on your hands for a while. Kind of think about what it is that you want out of your trading. The comment also, and this isn't certainly to rub salt into the wound, but it also, you know, throws into sharp relief my opinion of why you really don't want to follow gurus for your trade selection. You really have to learn how to do it on your own. Because if you talk to 10 people about whether NVIDIA is it a good buying opportunity or Bitcoin is right now, and you ask 10 people who are pros and who are well-respected in the community, take me out of it, you're probably going to get 10 answers. And it becomes very, very difficult to trade using somebody else's ideology. We're not talking about Christianity or Judaism or Islam, right? We're talking about a trading ideology that has to be congruent with who you are as a person. Makes sense? So, you know, he says here, I trade futures and God is my witness. I see 10 setups of one strategy, make money, when I, and as soon as I take the trade, it, it loses. And so the important thing is, and again, go back to yesterday's episode, about why I don't do the chart reading part is because for this very, very reason. And I, I, I couldn't have predicted that this type of comment would, would have come in on the heels of yesterday's video, but it, 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 and it's just my opinion. You may feel very, very differently. Um, you really have to learn how to sh you know, shave your own face, which is a way of saying, from the ideation, how do you collect your list, your wish list? How do you narrow that down to the point where you want to actually put in stop orders, right? Because you don't want to act impulsively and buy and sell things at the market. And then really importantly, how do you manage the trade? You know, what do you do once you're in the trade? I'm going to guess that 90, 100% of you go start looking at your P&L right away. And if it starts going against you, it's a bad trade. If it starts making you money, it's a good trade. And the truth is, if you're following a rule or a set of rules or set up or even a mechanized trading system that has positive expected value, every trade is a good trade because you should only be trading when you can express your edge. We talked about that earlier the week. What is the edge? It's, a, it's when you put on a trade that comes from having a positive expected value in a very simple way of saying it. I know there can be more deep expressions. So as long as you put those setups and those trades on every time you're aware of them, there's a good trade. The outcome in many ways is irrelevant. Why? Well, because you know where your protective stop is going to go. And you know from having back tested or simulated and or using real trading results, you know the percent of time that you're going to lose, the frequency with which you're going to lose, and you know the average size of your loss, you know the magnitude. And so at knowing that ahead of time, you become emotionally placated that any one particular trade doesn't matter. You also need to know that you're going to stop focusing on the results of any one particular trade and think about how your winning trades actually grow your account balance, right? Because that's the goal is to grow your wealth if you're going to do this. It's not to say I put down a thousand in margin and I sold my trade or got out of the winner for, for a $2,500 gain. You could say, or even 2000 bucks and say, well, you doubled your bet size. That's not really relevant in the grand scheme of things because we don't know making a thousand dollars what does that do to your overall account balance right if you're trading a million dollars it's one tenth of one percent so it's a rounding error who cares why would you get all lit up about that and if you lost that amount of money who cares why would you get all lit up about that right so i look at this like jujitsu how do you get a black belt well it's simple and easy at the same time you know you got to put your gi on and get on the mat and go to class and the hard part is you got to put the gi on get on the mat and go to class every day. And so you need to start to think about this as a marathon. I suffered through four years of kind of culturing the pearl 
And I don't want to say suffering because I knew I was onto something and every day I uncovered more data, mostly about myself. Because the market was going to be the market. Wheat was going to go where it was going to go, whether I was in it or not, whether I was watching it or not. It's an independent instrument. And so I don't get emotionally connected to things that I can't control. I don't fall in love with, with women who I've never met and who I've never spoken with. Because that's an infatuation. That's a whole different emotional system that you'd be running, right? So same thing with trading. I can appreciate that there's a whole host of people who can do things from, you know, high frequency trading to scalping for a minute or two to day trading to swing trading and then for the longer time frames. I celebrate all of it. But I can't come and say that one is better than the other definitively. Because so much it is tied to like what one resonates the most with you. You may understand everything intellectually, but from a compatibility standpoint, it's how does, it, how does the ebb and flow of your capital when you're running those particular models impact your emotional constitution? Because your ability to make money is really going to come down to your emotional ability to deal with the level of uncertainty that's attached to any particular trading style. I don't think winners take care of themselves. So a lot of times when I would backtest, I would say, okay, who cares about what the compounded annual growth rate is and the Sortino ratio? What's the drawdown and how long did it last? Because that's what's going to be the hardest part. That's when you see people freak out and abandon their system. They go for broke. Why? Well, because they can't take the heat in the kitchen. So again, I'd love to go over charts and God knows we do that. There's 150 hours worth of content behind the firewall. But to do that without marrying up the emotional and the psychological, you know, to play matchmaker that way, you know, wouldn't make sense. So for James, it might make sense to sit on your hands, go back to paper trading and put, pick one strategy that really, really resonates with you. Then cut off everybody. Don't go to social media. Why would I care what Paul Tudor Jones thinks of Coco right now? Because I have to manage the risk here in Los Angeles. He's a very smart guy. I look up to him. You all should, giving away $2 billion, you know, and he's a great human being. So, but I, I can't trade with his risk management rules. Obviously, if he gave me an allocation, there are parameters, you know, and I guess it's probably Louise or somebody in the, in the firm or whoever the risk manager is that would come knocking on the door and say, here's your VAR and here's what you can do. All that notwithstanding, I'd still have to find a way to make my personality work within those constraints or those boundaries. I don't want to say constraints. That makes it sound like there's no upside. And you need to figure that out for yourself. So what are you willing to feel? Are you afraid to do your own research? Or do you even know how to? Because that's a solvable problem. You can learn how to do your own research, but then you have to have the confidence, again, an emotional constitution to learn to rely on yourself. Can you do that? You said you're 60 years old. Where have you learned to rely on yourself in other parts of your life? Can you borrow that feeling and use it in your trading? If you've taken direction your whole life and kind of did what you were told, there's something very studious about that and dutiful, but it's not going to help you trade because traders are independent thinkers and they're leaders. I've said before about discords and telegrams, they can be helpful for two or three months, after which point you have to take what you've learned, make it your own, and then push your own bird out of the nest. There's no reason to be sucking on the nipple when you're 14 years old, so to speak. Learn what you need to learn and move on. All of my coaching programs have a finite ending period. <laughs> There's no way or reason to go on and on and on and blather at the mouth. I don't want that type of fandom. If I can do my job very, very well, I should be able to get the job done in a finite amount of time and guarantee the results and send you off on your own so that you can go win and, and take all the credit because you're going to have to anyway. If you win and you make money, that's on you. If you lose money, that's your responsibility too. I can't blame anybody or anything for you know, my trades and the trades that I put on. I have to live and, 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 and I have to eat my own cooking, I guess is what I'm saying. So there's no real reason to get sick here unless you're spending too much time on social media looking for validation for the trades that you think you want to put on. So all of that's curable. You just have to make the decision to do it and to learn to rely on yourself, which is also a teachable skill.
that's the first way to take responsibility, right? Because as traders, we live in a paradigm of personal responsibility. It's all up to you. I wish you all the best. Thanks very much for being here. Check out this, this list right here.